God is not interested in the downfall of his children, but he wants his own to always be at the top. The will of God is to take his children higher and never to bring them to shame. It is written in the word of God that anyone who believes in him will never be ashamed. So we can never be put to shame because we have someone who loves us. The Bible says in Psalm 18 verse 48 that, quote, He delivereth me from mine enemies. Yea, thou liftest me up above those that rise against me. Thou hast delivered me from the violent man. End quote. From that Bible passage, we can see that God is only in the lifting up of his children, and he disappoints the craft of the enemies. The believer's foe should never overcome him, because the believer has a father that always disappoints his enemy. The believer's enemy is always against God's agenda for him, so God would rather disgrace the enemy's plan and lift the believer. God's favor is upon one who will put one's enemies to shame. So, one doesn't have to worry. God is working things out, and God's got one's back. So your part is to fix your eyes on Jesus. Maintain your confident trust in God, and continue to look to God for encouragement, comfort, and hope. There is an assurance of lifting as you look on to Jesus, and he's going to put your enemies to shame, because your enemy is against God's will and agenda. You should never avenge yourself, but leave it to the wrath of God. For it is written, quote, Vengeance is mine, I will repay, says the Lord. On the contrary, if your enemy is hungry, feed him. If he is thirsty, give him something to drink. For by doing so, you will heap burning coals on his head. End quote. Do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. So, you are not to be the one to disgrace your enemy. Love them and do good to them, but it is to God to disappoint and disgrace them. You have one greatest enemy, that's the devil himself. The devil is your greatest enemy. If you say you don't have an enemy, then can you see that you have one? The devil. The devil has different strategies, but God has given you the ability to bring his strategies down. He's been defeated already when Jesus Christ died and rose again, so you just have to work toward that victory. One of the strategies of the devil is that he instills fear in you, but for you to put the devil to shame, you have to meditate on God's word and speak the word. Whenever you feel fear, rebuke it and then pray in the spirit. Another of the strategies of the enemy is to lie to you daily. Have you ever got negative and discouraging thoughts that come out of nowhere? Sometimes they can be uneasy to recognize the enemy's lies because they sound like they're true. However, if you accept them as truth or even believe them, then you've fallen for his prank, giving him the upper hand. The enemy knows your weakness, and he plays on them. He knows your fears, and he tries his best to feed them by telling you lies. Now the question is, why does he lie to you? What does he get out of it? The answer is, access to your life. He has come, quote, to steal and kill and destroy, end quote, John 10.10. And if he can get you into wrong thinking, wrong believing, wrong saying, and wrong acting, the door to your life is wide open to him. So, if you have any thoughts that are the opposite of what God says, thoughts like you aren't going to be healed, delivered, saved, prosperous, full of joy, full of peace, full of hope or power in the kingdom of God, know that they are outright lies straight from the pit of hell itself. So, one way to disgrace this enemy's craft is by taking the thought captive, and this is done by using the word of God against those demeaning thoughts. Also, one can disgrace the enemy by responding with truth, and this is done by speaking the word against the enemy. All these are achieved by God's divine tool and not necessarily you. From these, we can see that though the enemy will try, there is always a way out for you. You will always be lifted above circumstances that are unpleasant, and the enemy will be ashamed. There's a major example in the Bible, which is the children of Israel and the craftiness of Haman. Haman wanted to destroy all the children of Israel so that he could be lifted, but God in love and mercy turned the table around. He sent Esther to the palace and made the king never see sleep until he blessed the man, Mordecai, that saved him. 
This was the way God lifted his children and brought down the device of the enemy, Haman. God is the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. He'll do the same for you in that circumstance. Another example is that of David and Goliath. Goliath thought he could mock God and the children of Israel, but God came in for them. God rescued them from the Philistines and then lifted David. This is the consistent character of God towards those who fear and honor him. God does not give the enemy power over you. Rather, he lifts you and disgraces your enemy. The Lord blesses his children and disgraces the enemy for their sake. The Bible says that the Lord will fight for you and you shall hold your peace. God will always take the side of his children, therefore disappointing the enemy. There are several ways one can see God's lifting in one's life, in your business, career, ministry, and so on. Sometimes, sometimes, the enemy will put thoughts in your mind, thoughts of failure, thoughts of giving up, and even of suicide. But you see that God will help you if you look to him. He will lift you above those thoughts. Apart from the real enemy, which is the devil, some physical enemies even see our downfall. Goliath was a physical enemy. Haman was also one. And as God is the same forevermore, he will always bring your enemies to shame if you fear and honor him. Enemies in your life are a reflection of your life in a way. They show that you have a beautiful and eventful life. A poor man doesn't have enemies. So, if you have enemies in your life, be happy, because your life is beautiful. These enemies, when they attack you, in a day of trouble help you to get stronger in faith. The more enemies you fight with the strength of God, the more you trust God, and thereby making your faith in God increase. A man without problems may always think he doesn't need God, whereas he needs God. Those enemies always in turn point you to know God more, serve him more, and also trust him more. So, in life, there are enemies that are against one's success, one's good, and growth. But as it is the consistent character of God to lift you, you must know and acknowledge the fact that God doesn't want you to be disgraced. And he only loves to see you at the top. Continually trust God for lifting power and you will experience lifting all the days of your life even though you have enemies. The Bible says, when God is for me, who can be against me? No one. The Lord is with you, and he always fights for you. Victory is yours. Live out this victory. You don't need to worry about what the enemy's planning in the secret. Sure, obviously, they'll be planning your downfall. But the God that you serve is the God that disappoints the devices of the crafty so that their hands cannot perform their enterprise. When they come one way, they will flee seven ways. God is for our liftings, and the essence of this lifting is to disappoint the devices of the crafty, so that when they see how much God is lifted from one level and promoted to a greater height, they will be frustrated. You can bank on the word of God that when he says, no matter what way these enemies come to see that you go down, God will be the glory and the lifter of your head. You should just settle it in your heart so that you cannot fall and lose because of the glory of God upon your life. These enemies can see it. That's why they're trying to stop you from manifesting that glory on the earth. You will have a testimony of lifting. It might not look like it now, but God is doing it in his season, and your enemies will be disgraced.